I am a big fan of the Python programming language. And the Parrot refactoring cart is also a favorite of mine. So today we're going to do Parrot with Python. This refactoring cart is a small, fun exercise that you can use to improve your programming skills. And the goal is to refactor safely. I want to train myself to make fewer mistakes and get to a better design faster. And I don't want to be introducing bugs while I do that. So today I'm going to take advantage of some refactoring tools to make it even safer. I'm going to use PyCharm. Now I've previously solved this exercise in other languages like c -sharp and Java, and the refactoring support for those is actually considerably stronger than for Python. But I want to show you that refactoring can still be done safely, even with less tool support. This is the starting position for the Python version of the Parrot refactoring cutter. And looking at the code, there's not that much of it. The design isn't that bad, but we've got these repeated match statements here in the speed and the cry methods. And it's actually matching on the type of the Parrot and we would like to instead be using polymorphism for the, instead of this kind of switching on type. So uh, the first thing to do is check what test coverage we've got for our refactoring. And we've got good test coverage. We've got all these tests here. They execute very quickly. So the first step actually of the refactoring proper then is to replace calls to the constructor with a factory method so that we can easily have the factory method return the various subclasses that we're going to introduce. So the first thing I'm looking at here is what are the usages of the constructor? In a real project, there will be more kinds of uses than this. Um, these are all in the test cases. So basically, we need to convert all of the tests to instead use a kind of factory method. So this is like one of the tests. They're all constructing different kinds of parrot with different kinds of attributes. So if we just start by taking this bit of code and extracting that as a method called create parrot, that's a good start. So there's a factory function. It's just not quite generic enough to use in all the places we need to use it yet. So I'm going to parameterize it. So that was the introduce parameter refactoring. And I'm going to do that on all four of the parameters here. So it's adding arguments to this, um, adding parameters or arguments to this function and it's putting in the default values uh, here, which isn't quite what I wanted either, because I want each place that I call this to use these um, to specify the arguments and, and this method to be kind of generic. So I didn't find a good way to do that with an automated refactoring. Um, but I found that if I just copy the entire argument list here and paste it into the call site, um, that seems to work. Test still passing. And then I can uh, remove the defaults from here by hand, um, which will uh, have the desired effect of making this method kind of reusable and not make any assumptions about what arguments you're going to call it with. So that function there looks pretty generic and reusable. My test passing. Um, but I think this is in the wrong place. I need to move this into the production code. This is in the test code. So I'm going to use the move function uh, refactoring here. And it, it gives me an option. Do I want to move any of the others as well? And I'm no, just this one. Um, and I'm going to tell it which file to move it to, parrot.py. And now it's fixed the import for me. So if I just follow that import, it takes me back to the parrot class here. So that's in the right place now. And it's just a question of updating all of the usages now. So if I just refresh this list of usages, it's found the one there in the factory function but there are still a lot left in the tests. Now, the, the kind of the slow and, and careful way would to be to do these one by one and replace each one in turn with the factory function. But I'm feeling kind of confident that I know what to do here. I just, all of these calls to the parrot constructor, if I just um, use multiple cursors here to select them all, I can just replace this with a, a call directly to create parrot. They have the same arguments um, in the same order. So uh, that should work. And the test is still passing, so that seemed to be successful. Great. So I think I have, if I look at the usages again now, it's just, yeah. So I've just encapsulated all the usages of the constructor of this class to the factory function. So that puts me in a good position now to have subclasses. So let's commit that. 
um, convert constructor to factory method. Um, and I'm going to be using Arlo's commit notation. So that was a fairly automated thing. So maybe I can have a small R, less risky. But on second thoughts, actually, let's make that a big R. It was slightly risky. I did have to do kind of search and replace and stuff. OK, let's do some more work on this factory function. Let's go and find it because it's kind of hidden here at the bottom of the file. I'm just going to move it. So I fold up the code so I get the whole method in the clipboard and then paste it here right near the top of the file where I can see the types of parrot I want to work with. Um, OK, so now I'm going to need that match statement for all of these types of parrots. And if I just begin typing this match statement, I was hoping the tool would help me to generate all the cases, but it didn't seem to. So I'm just going to paste in all the types there and use multiple cursors here. And this allows me just to write in the, the boilerplate that I need here. Um, I've got to qualify those types with the, the enum name and then put the colons at the end. And yeah, so now I've got the cases. I should paste in this this line of code to each case. Um, so just to begin with, I'm not going to uh, create those new subclasses in each of the there, the mate statements here, each of the case statements. I'm just going to construct the ordinary parrot. And then I shouldn't need that first line. Oh, except now that IDE is warning me that this local variable might not have been initialized yet, which actually shouldn't be impossible because it's an enum that I'm matching on and I've got all the types of the enum. But let's put in a default case anyway. Um, perhaps in future I would add a, a new type to my enum and forget to add it here. So let's have a good exception message for that. OK, so I think the tests are all passing. This is probably a good moment for a commit. Um, so again, I did this by hand, so big R. I've got the factory method structure in place for adding the subclasses. Oh, soon I'll be able to add those subclasses. Now, just thinking about that, though, I'm probably going to want my subclasses in different modules and then it might not be convenient to have this in the same module as the superclass. So I'm just going to move it using the move move module members again, create a new file for that um, and add that new file to git. So there it is. There's my new file. It's just uh, moved it here and fixed all the imports for me. Excellent. Tests are passing. That's probably worth a commit as well. I use the tool, so small r, move factory method to own file. OK, perhaps finally I'm ready to add some subclasses. So if I just start to use, just to imagine I had a European parrot class and just start using it, uh, the tool will help me to create that. Unfortunately, it doesn't help very much because um, it needs to inherit from parrot if it's going to be at all useful, this subclass. So now suddenly um, it looks like it works. OK, but that's good. It's a start. Um, empty subclass. I'm going to put in its own file. So I'm using this move members again, I create a new file that I'll add to git. Um, and I like to have them all open in tabs for the files I'm working on. So OK, well, my European parrot looks a little empty here. I think it needs its own constructor. So I'm going to override the superclass constructor, which my tool helps me with. And then looking at this, I want to be really sure that this is a European parrot. So I'm actually going to hard code the what I passed the super type there for the parrot type and say, no, this is definitely a European parrot. And I won't let people from outside pass that in. So I've got this um, remove uh, unused parameter here, but it's kind of saying, well, do you want to find them in the base method as well? No, I don't think so. Just European parrot shouldn't have that argument. The base method pr probably still needs it. Um, let's make a commit. I've got a new constructor for my European parrot subclass. Excellent. So now I just actually am going to do the same thing for the African parrot and the Norwegian parrot. And I don't know if it's worth me going through this in all the details because it's exactly the same for the other two subclasses. I hope you like the demo so far. Please remember to actually hit like on the video. It helps the YouTube algorithm to know whether to recommend it to more people. So just um, to explain what I did there, I've created the African parrot and the Norwegian blue parrot subclasses in the same way as the European parrot. So I've got all three of them here, but they're all essentially empty. So it starts 
time to actually start, you know, pushing down functionality into them like this. Um, this is the goal of this refactoring really is to use polymorphism instead of these match statements that we've got in speed and cry. So the next thing to do is then to push down this speed method into all the subclasses and then it should be possible to simplify it. So I've got a tool here that will do the push down for me. So let's, yeah, so there it is. It's gone from the superclass and uh, the tests are all passing because it's copied all that code into each of the subclasses. So there they all are. But now, of course, a lot of this match case statement stuff here is, is redundant. We know we've got a European parrot here, so we know that only one of these cases is actually ever going to be valid here. So I was trying to get the tool to help me um, because it should be able to kind of recognize that and remove redundant code. So I tried just getting it to match on something that's that's fixed and then see if it would detect the irrelevant cases, but that didn't work. It doesn't really seem to suggest anything here that would be useful. Um, what if I make this the default case and put it at the start? Well, it's not legal syntax and it's found that the code is unreachable, but it can't kind of suggest anything to do about that. So anyway, I think the the quickest way to actually fix this is to just um, copy the relevant line of code in the case statements and then just uh, use that. So I'll just copy the, the correct line and then and then it can see, well, this code's unreachable. Um, can it delete it for me? No, it's got no suggestions. It's found unreachable code, but has no suggestions. So, mm, OK, I'll remove it myself then. OK, uh, tests are passing. That was a major simplification there of the uh, code in European Parrot. And I'm going to do the same for the African Parrot. Um, so I'm just going to take this line of code. At least I'm going to use extend selection to make sure I get the right bit of code into the clipboard before I paste it there. Cool, that seems to work. It's good to have tests as a backup, but I like to do things as safely as I can while I'm coding. So this is the Norwegian parrot. Get that bit of code and paste it in there. Make all that code unreachable. So I just remove it. Test passing. Great. So that that code looks much better now. I got rid of that match statement. So uh, I've removed the redundant code in the subclasses. But actually, I haven't committed since I did the push down. I possibly should have put the push down in its own commit thinking about it now. But OK, still, it's better to commit um, more, even if I forget some. OK, so then there's the other method. Maybe I'll do it better this time. And let's push this one down too. Uh, the cry method, push that down to the subclasses. So there's not much left here in the superclass. And there it is. I've got the cry method now in all the, the subclasses. So the same thing again, I want to simplify this code. I'm going to just copy that case and remove the rest. Yep, same for the African. So yeah, this is same, same. This code is very simple. I mean, it's just one line for each case statement. So it's actually fairly easy to see what I'm doing and get it right. In real code, you'd probably have more code in each um, of these match statements. It might be more complicated. You'd have to be more careful about this part. So. Uh, I might be tempted if it was more complicated to do a lot more commits. Again, I've I've done the, the push down and the removing redundant code in all the subclasses in one commit, which kind of works here, but you might want to be more careful and take more smaller steps. Excellent. So this base class now is looking much smaller and I got rid of all of those match statements. So in a way I'm kind of done. But I think there's actually more potential to push stuff down here. I'm looking at the type in particular. Uh, this is only being used now here, basically. Um, the, the type is, is redundant because we are using this polymorphism instead to, to switch the behavior depending on the subtype. So actually, we don't need this. Uh, I think I'm just going to remove that. And then it helpfully tells me, well, then you don't need this argument to the constructor. So let's remove that. Excellent. That simplified things a little bit. Let's make a commit for that. We removed the unused type of parrot member variable. Excellent. Right, so then I'm kind of looking at this um, member variable here, number of coconuts. It's used in two places. 
um, in the African parrot and in the the constructor here. So it seems to me that it's only the African parrot that uses this. So it's another candidate that should be moved down into that subclass. Um, so let's see if I can get the tool to help me with that. So I want to move down this um, this member, this member var uh, variable, the number of coconuts. Oh, it's it's complaining. I'm not really sure why it's complaining about that. Um, well, let's just see what it does. I've, I've got a commit really recently. Let's see what it does. Oh, <laughs> it's moved the constructor. What's happened to my constructor? Um, that's that. OK, it did warn me. All my tests are now failing. I think um, that was a bad idea. So I'm just going to back up uh, to my most recent commit where everything was green and uh, see if I can do that again uh, a bit better. OK, what's going on now? All right, it's put back the constructor now and let's see. It's yeah. OK, so there's I'm still got this number of coconuts is only used in the African uh, subclass. So let's just move this by hand instead and see if that works a bit better, because that's what I wanted. I just want to move it into there. Tests are all passing um, and then it shouldn't be needed in the superclass and the tests are passing. So, um, yeah, so that was the push down I wanted to do. And now this argument here is redundant. So let's remove it. Cool. OK, so let's look at that. That seems to be much more like what I wanted. Oh, except now I've got redundant construct arguments in the other subclasses. So let's just remove those as well. Just for this class. Remove that one. Yep. Great. So my factory now has got the arguments right. It's only passing the number of coconuts to the African parrot. Great stuff. Let's make a commit. We have pushed down number of coconuts member variable to African parrot. What's next then? So here we've got these other two member variables, voltage and nailed. So this one's only used in the Norwegian blue. And if I remember rightly, I think the other one is the same. It's also only used in the Norwegian blue subclass. So I want to do the same thing, just push those ones down to that subclass. So I'm going to do this exactly the same as the previous one. So I'm just going to skip over a little bit here to, to speed things up. So this is what it looks like now in the factory function. Only the Norwegian blue parrot is getting those two arguments. And the constructor to parrot is looking very empty. But I'm just going to make a commit to say what I did there. I moved down voltage and is nailed to the Norwegian blue subclass. OK, and then I can just remove that constructor that we already noted was was redundant. Great. Well, I've got my parrot class into a much smaller state now, just three methods left. Two of them are only used in one place. And the rest of the refactoring, which I unfortunately don't think I have time to show you, is basically to continue pushing down these and um, eliminating all the contents of this class until you can get rid of it entirely. Before I close, though, I wanted to show you the full commit history of this refactoring that I've just done. And hopefully you can see from this that I've made a lot of commits with messages that describe small incremental refactorings that I've made together with a little bit of information about how safe I felt those were. The big R means they were a little bit more risky. And this is what it should look like when you're doing a, a larger change like this, eliminating a class and replacing it with subclasses. Lots of small commits. So that was a demo of the Parrot refactoring Carter. And now it's your turn to try it out. I hope you'll be able to refactor as smoothly and safely as I was. If you like this video, please hit like and also take a look around my channel and my playlist, Top Code Carters in particular. You can support me and my work maintaining all these code carters via Patreon. Happy coding!